Hello everybody and welcome back to the second week the second episode of the resurrection series so in today's episode we are going to study history just history we are going to take a look at history and we are going to see how historians verify whether an event has occurred in history or not that's it for today's episode so before further ado let us begin with a short word of prayer in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen our father who art in heaven holy be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil amen Uh, so guys let us begin to answer the question how do we know with historical certainty that jesus was raised from the dead so before we begin to answer this question there is another question that i would like all of you guys to think about so here is the question how do you know that george washington was the first president of usa so you guys might want to stop the video and think about this for a while How do we know that George Washington was the first president of USA? So now that you guys might have thought about it, uh, you can keep that with yourself. We are not trying to lay down a case to whether George Washington was the first president of America or not. So what I want to prove the point that I'm trying to prove is that you study the resurrection like you study any other historic event history is history and the process remains the same now how do you study history so i will give you five common sense criteria or principles that historians apply in order to prove whether an account is credible or not so these are not the only five criteria that historians employ but these are five of the many criteria and these will be of very high importance to our case the case that we are trying to present and that is why i am going ahead and giving you this so the first one is that if multiple independent sources verify the same fact then that makes it more credible so what is an independent source suppose i philips and ruth three of us witness an accident and three of us give our account of how the accident happened then we are three independent sources however if i witness the accident and i tell ruth and she tells philips that's just one independent source that is not uh, that's not an independent that's not three independent sources now the second principle is attestation by a neutral or a hostile source adds to its credibility now christians are saying certain things so if a non christian also says the same thing then that makes the that makes that particular event more credible third one is the criteria of embarrassment so i will not make something up that makes me look in a bad light now if i say that the catholic church has a history of corruption i am a catholic and i will not make that up because that is embarrassing to me i can make up stuff like the catholic church is the cleanest organization in the history of mankind that is the stuff that i would want to make up because i am a catholic the fourth one is i witness testimony if i see an event and if i have written it down that makes me that makes my testimony very very credible and the fifth and the last one is early sources now the earlier document is to an event that has happened the more reliable it is i want you guys to pay attention to the last two that is i witness testimony and early sources these are of extreme importance now i want you to think about something now let's say we get to know that a holocaust survivor is still alive so as soon as we get to know people will rush to that particular sur- survivor and definitely want to interrogate him or her and that survivor will most probably describe the torture that he faced so at this point are the interrogators going to say 
well you you see you are a jew you're definitely going to portray the germans in a bad light why should we believe you your testimony is unreliable will any interrogator say that no of course not why is it not a possibility is there not a possibility that this holocaust survivor is lying yes absolutely that is a possibility you can never rule that out but unless there is a very good reason for us to believe that this holocaust survivor might be lying we won't really think of it in that manner that is the power of an eye witness testimony unless there is a very good reason to not believe a person eye witness testimony is the most reliable evidence that anyone can ever have he or she is lying that is always going to be a possibility always but unless there's good evidence to take that into consideration it is always ignored having said that let's compare this kind of the evidence that we have to uh, some other events in history so firstly as i had mentioned in the previous episode also and i don't want to be going on and on about this like a broken record but the bible is a reliable historic doctrine we are not looking at it like the true and inspired word of god but we are looking at it as a reliable historic document and in the bible what do we have we have four independent sources the four gospels matthew mark luke and john we also have the letters of saint paul which also we will be considering and let us take a look at how early are these four gospels so the gospel of saint luke was written in around 85 ad these are the critics date by the way so the latest that new testament scholars new testament critics date the gospel of saint luke is 85 ad the gospel of mark is around 70 to uh, 60 to 75 ad yes matthew is around 80 ad and john is the last gospel it's around 95 ad and let us all keep in mind that jesus was crucified in around 33 ad and what about the letters of saint paul so the new testament contains a lot of letters by saint paul but of all these letters there are around 6 that most reliable that we can say with the most amount of surety that this were definitely written by saint paul or paul you might want to call him so these six letters are the letter to the romans first and second corinthians galatians philippians first Th- thessalonians and philemon now new testament scholar atheistic critic agnostic actually leaning towards atheism as ex evangelical scholar bart ehrman he calls them the undisputed pauline letters in fact he says that there are eight there are two more but we will be going with only six so and how early were these documents written by saint paul saint paul was killed in around 50 ad so all these letters go way before even the gospels so that is how early are uh, these gospels were written so at this point someone a critic might say that uh, hey guys so that's actually pretty late you 50 ad 60 ad that's too late jesus was crucified in 33 ad so guys one thing to keep in mind is that this is the first century that we are talking about this is not the 21st century this is way before the printing press was even invented let me give you a comparison for you guys to know how early this is when we looked at it from a historic standpoint so you know alexander the great right right do you believe that he existed at this point some of you might say athena what do you believe what do you mean believe that he existed i mean he is not a ghost of course he existed he is a man so guys do you know what are the earliest sources that we have for alexander the great the earliest sources that we have for the man are nearly 300 years after he died the best known sources being plutarch and arian they wrote around 120 ad but uh, alexander the great lived in around he lived around 300 years before jesus existed so that there's a gap of around 400 to 425 years so at this point someone might say that you see the gospels are very biased so here's the thing 
all of us are biased there is nobody absolutely nobody in this world who approaches an idea without a bias so we might like to believe that we do or try out but being 100% neutral is next to impossible and let me also mention just because someone is biased does not mean that he's wrong someone can be biased and be right and that is how we are going to look at the bible that yes these are christians who are writing that does not make everything that they write true rather it makes it reliable it make it let, lets us know that if saint luke has written the gospel of saint luke then he must believe that jesus did in fact rise from the dead and one more thing that a critic might bring up is that they might say that you see the gospel contains a lot of miracles and that makes it unreliable one thing do you guys know how plutarch begins of his life of alexander he says that alexander was born of a virgin and that his father was one of the greek gods and yes these writings are considered reliable so when we take a historic document and we see that the person who has written it might be biased we need to keep in check our bias and that person's bias and see what is the data that we can get out of this document and that is what I, we are going to be doing in the upcoming episodes so that's all for this particular episode and one more thing you might be thinking that okay so alexander the great my was born of a virgin that's what the historic documents say and christians don't believe it and yes we don't believe it because we think that um, it was probably a story that was made up and one more thing is that plutarch wrote, wrote in around 120 ad so he most probably got the idea of the christian documents and we believe that jesus was born of a virgin because we believe the bible to be true and inspired word of god we are not expecting the same from you you do not have to believe in the gospels of saint luke and saint matthew to be true and inspired all we want you to do is to look at them as people in the first century who wrote a biography on this man called jesus of nazareth so that's it for the second episode let us end with a word of prayer in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen thank you lord for the resources and for everyone who has listened to this episode till right now i offer them all up to you through the intercession of mother mary hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us and us now and at the hour of our death amen thank you guys for sticking by please do like share and subscribe that encourages us to get more content for you to generate more content for you guys thank you all